Hello, hello, and welcome to another Rangaroo cast, me Rangaroo, and today we are doing a 1v1 on Carpiat. So, on the right hand side, Blue Plains Blue Ball, we have RKK Romeros, or Romy Ross, I, I can't pronounce names, I apologise, playing as the 15th Scottish Infantry Division, and on the left hand side, in Red Plains Red Ball, we got Top Flock, playing as the 3rd Fouch Jager, so we got rather meta... Third Fouch League of Air, so the Royal and not so matter 15 Scotch. I'm rather looking forward to this. Scotch, I'd have to say, are a very well balanced faction. They, they have everything. They got good AT guns, decent infantry, a good amount of planes, artillery, you name it. They have something good in every category, but nothing really amazing. I would say, don't get any crazy two star veterancy units, or hardly any. And it's just a lot of good stuff, nothing crazy good. Well, for the Fouche, you literally only get Fouche because there's a main frontline infantry for A phase. And as you can see, they got a two up top, a uh, SPW 2 w 2 which is a uh, captured dingo. You're going to be seeing a lot of first engagement up top with MMG. I see no, neither side, I see Mansion to shoot. We're going to get a machine gun and some Fouche in the building up top. Uh, Vickers already in position to start a uh, pounded array as the fire triggers try to get into the building. And yeah, RKKA being rather defensive up top, just holding on to his side of the town, just the edge of it as well. And main puss seems to be coming on from down below. As we've got a Vickers gun, a six pounder, yeah, leader, and a few command carriers, an MMG carrier. Well, all there is is a single MG34 on Fauchegos, and if he uses his fire support correctly, he should be rather fine. So, rather a defensive start from our KKA, but not a bad idea, because Scotch A-Face, even though it is the same points rise, is pretty crap unit rise. You're, you're very limited, especially if you don't have any good mortars. You get those 70-point runs with 700-meter range, but they are just terrible, absolutely terrible. And also, his infantry is just bad. Even though they're decent, but against Fouchakers, he does not stand a chance. A Bren gun is just not that good. Uh, Flamethrower dude getting destroyed. So, really, he's just going to come down to being used in fire support rather effectively. He does have a Churchill Mark V, which is definitely a down good pick, as it has that giant 95mm howitzer. And it's just going to be coming down to fire support to help him win these battles. And he's already getting pushed up top. Rather hard and plus one point advantage to top flock. And down below, he's just pinned down the Fountain Jagers, got vehicles, not gonna even get too close because you don't want to actually get engaged by the Fountain Jagers rocket launcher. And that's gonna give him a good amount of land. And even though he's at a rather small area of the map, it makes up for a rather big chunk just in terms of map control. Got Panzer L6 slowly being brought down below, and we got Honey Stuart just holding down the road. Some rifles being brought up, setting up or forcing the Fouchagers to retreat to better cover. And the Fouchager almost already pinned down. There we go. Look at Honey's Street going to be open out. And once again, good use of Fire Sport, bringing up another Churchill Mark V. He's really adamant about using no Churchills. And he still do a damn good job with them. We do have a Poppachin, which is a bit short range, but of course can pretty much kill anything, apart from Jumbo, of course. Well, we could kill Jumbo, it's just a. Uh, you have to it's, it's a bit lucky because it's not that much armor penetration difference. Uh, the Pandro 6 is stunning up the MMG carrier. And we do have a 6 pounder here, but it does not have line of sight. Just as long as he stays in that position, he will be good. But if he moves up anymore, he will get destroyed. Now, the Churchill 5 doesn't have an AT weapon. But it's big ass cannon is more than enough to just stun up the Panzer L6. Heck, I think you could technically blow it up if you shot it enough, but I'm not entirely sure. But never mind, there's a six pounder here, and down goes our Italian brother. A rifle also on the ground as one foul check has been brought up. And their top flocks is kind of defending what he got. I mean, really losing down below has hindered him quite a bit. And once you get into B phase, it will really kick into gear for RKKA because he gets a huge point advantage compared to top flock, but once again to see it's rather abysmal. 
So it's all about him being able to take advantage of that B phase effectively. Oh, we've got HS129B1 going in for the church. Should get the kill. Here we go. Blows it up. Easy peasy like. And a good use of air support here. Yeah. And that's probably going to make our KKA start buying some anti-air. Uh, a phase, you can only really get uh, tripostons. It's rather tripostons are bloody good. It's just uh, some points that he has to spend on. And they don't have the longest range either compared to a bow force. And there's a smith going in for a few strafing runs. And down the six pounder getting straight or oh, stunned up by the Messersmith, of course. And I'd be moving up at Panzer 06 right now to try and finish off the six pounder. But he's going to be choosing to keep it back. And RKK really only has just the outskirts of the town left under his control. He still has open ground engagement advantage due to all the vehicles he has. But it's about getting into the town and actually fighting. That's going to be hard with just rifles. And that Messersmith is continuing to fly around and making sure that six pounder cannot engage. Still the Panzer 6 just uh, staying back. We've got a Spitfire going in for the Messerschmitt. And not a good idea considering the Messerschmitt has a veterancy advantage. We take a look at stats. I mean, they're pretty much even. Just a slight different wrap and load out. And the Messerschmitt is going to be forced to retreat because it's out of fuel. So maybe Spitfire can get the kill here. Oh no, that will be... Oh, is he going to lose the Messerschmitt? Oh. Nope, manages to escape. That was a lucky, quite a lucky call, I have to say. Because he was right, just right in a position to get killed, yeah. But he wasn't too stunned up with the morale damage, so he managed to evade and escape. Spitfire as well. Fire! And we're going to be in B phase very shortly. Ritual and our KK, as I mentioned before, to really kick it into gear. There goes the M34, MG34. There's good use of fire support is what he needs to break into the town. And by B phase, he also does get some more vetted rifles. And assault pioneers, or assault engineers, which aren't amazing. It's just a five man squad of one satchel charge, but just a single satchel charge in the right point can do a tremendous amount of damage. And heck, even if they knock out half the HP of a Fouchager, they've already paid themselves off because they're only 15 points, the cheapest chips. Uh, Recon just getting rickety wrecked there, yeah, but the Fouchagers have opened them up for. Oh, exposed by the AVRA. Didn't realize this was an AVRA for the Church Mark V, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, would definitely clear out the town, and it has enough armor to take a lot of fire. And we are now in the B phase. I'm thinking also another good thing for RKK is maybe try to push down into the airfield here because you can get those Churchills which are rather slow but they do have a tremendous amount of armor which will keep them alive. You know, the one problem is is getting shot from the side and possibly planes let's say B1 uh, strafing you as well. So you definitely want to get some anti-aircraft cover if you were to push on the airfield. Uh, Metasmith going in once again for another 6 pounder. He is an Anti-tank gun Messerschmitt or an anti anti-tank gun Messerschmitt. If I'm trying to make a bad joke here. Another Spitfire being brought out once again. Doesn't have veteran she has no AA to really help the Spitfire too, so as you can see, just that one strafe has knocked out half of its morale. Not a good idea, buddy. I mean if you had one AA piece it'd go much better in his favour, but still it is really dodgy. I don't know why he is even engaging the Messerschmitt because he's just going to lose a Spitfire and yeah, it's forced to fall back. And the Messerschmitt will be able to give chase because they do have the same speed, of course. And the Spitfire is smoking away. Oh, I think that yeah, Spitfire is just going to get out. Messerschmitt to, to right of a turn there. Yeah. But it's going to be quite a while to see that Spitfire. Now, do you have a Stug 3 being brought out top? Which is rather interesting. Don't really see a lot of people like ripping out Stug Free immediately as third Fouchager. You used to like to get some, you know, of regular infantry guys and anti-tank guns, but Stug Free is a damn good choice because it's a proper tank 
It can knock out the AVRE at close range and the other vehicles. Because his main concern right now is flighting the vehicles that are really keeping him pinned down. You see, he had to force himself into the back end of the town here to set up a secondary defensive line. Another Mazda Smith being brought out. There goes the Spitfire. Jesus Christ, why are you doing this? And finally, he's bringing out an AA piece, but good kill here from Top Flock. Having his priority is exactly where he needs to win the match, because he is an airborne deck. And the Fouch is taking some fire, just some machine gun fire on JVRE, gets under position. Oh boy, that building is going to be not just half a building, but no building. And there we go, AVRE getting into position. Uh, shooting the Puppetin of all things, and yeah, it goes. No more Puppetin. Which is an extremely funny name. And there goes EC, he's the Fouchagers. I think he knows what to do. Oh, again, it's, oh, side shot there by the HS. Does get killed. Good, good, god, good goddamn kill out from Top Flock. And this is really showing RKKA really needs. Yeah, to air, anti air, because this is just getting a bit ridiculous now. And I was always going to go for a second straight from the honey syrup, but instead he is going to pull back. And this is a good time to use a Spitfire to chase down a fighter bomber such as this. And he should be able to kill the HS because there is no anti aircraft to stop him. And there he goes. Still not a good, not a good loss losing at at uh, Drew Avre. There goes six pounder finally engaging the Panzer L6. Basically still alive after all his Messerschmitt runs, and now the Falchagers are going to be. Moving up, and if he can knock out the fail triggers, that's going to be a good chunk of map under his control. Going to be forcing top flock to send him more reinforcements down below, even just to hold it. And the MG34 alone in the aircraft hangar, not in a great position. And I'm always thinking, how the hell do you fire out of this? I understand it's a building for cover, but you can't shoot out the windows because there's no like stairway. So really, all you can shoot out is the entrance here. Unless you like poke a hole in the side, but even then, that's not that's that's not good cover. But hey, that's uh, that's uh, still the vision for you. At least uh, build mechanics near so bad in raw games. Oh, rifle leaders hitting the stug free, not killing it because of course it's it's a piat. What do you expect? But enough to force it to fall back, and it's going to be forcing our KKA, or oh, I mean a uh, top flock, my bad, to buy a supply truck to repair the stug because it's out of ammunition. MG34, yeah, he's pretty much going to die. I got some infantry reinforcements down below, but I think maybe a support gun. We haven't seen any LG40s or LG42s from Top Flock, which are rather popular support units. They're just really good support guns. And I think down below, I'd give him a damn good advantage. He can start popping off his infantry. And the six pounder can't do anything against a support gun. Now, can it? We've got the AA gun down below, and now Challenger being brought up top. Probably to fight that Stug, of course. I mean, it's not going to be the greatest in the first support role, but knocking out Stug will definitely give him, and the Stu 42 will give him a bit of leeway. As the Stu is slowly and surely trying to kill the Honey, but the Honey probably has a better chance of killing it. And uh, he's not going to be able to fall back here, unfortunately. He is just going to. Hold his ground and. I mean, at range, can he kill it? I think he can just barely penetrate the stew. Yeah, he's just. He, he's in an odd spot. At least the stew can just keep him permanently pinned down. Do you have an infantry fight down below? Some Bren groups, soap pioneers, those 15 point guys from before, trying to get in close. This guy, or did they already manage to use their grenades? These, these guys have. Those Sonic Pioneers are going to be vital to kicking these Fout Shakers out of the buildings. But we've got some Stern Pioneers here from Top Flock. A lot of Stern Pioneers. Which, I oh, Jesus Christ, that is a lot of Stern Pioneers. So we've got run, and we've got three, and now we've got six. Jesus, that's a good amount of Stern. It's really going to be storming that area. And what makes these guys better than regular is not just the veteran suit, but I do have G43s compared to... I think the regular just use car 98s. 
It seems like G43 to be a rather Fauci thing to have, but I may be wrong on that, so I'm not going to 100% verify. We've got mortars, and of course, Fauci pioneers pinning down his rifles, and Stern pioneers going in for the charge. And the problem is, it's trying to get Stern pioneers close enough to actually rail Stern, because it's quite an open ground engagement here, no forest to. M mend m meander around in go go mark and mortia still going to be falling back to get resupplied but I don't think Kubrakan is going to have enough munitions to really give it a good amount of ammunition so I'm expecting a bomb and run there we go spitfire with uh, two big loads there is a really crappy bomber a very slow but uh, well, it doesn't really matter I mean, there's no AA and yeah there I go <laughs> <laughs> there goes the Kubrag, and that Stu's not going to be getting much ammunition. Only got two AP and HE shots. So he's going to have to wait around a little bit longer to get resupplied. Got a Messerschmitt chasing the Spitfire. No AA up top, which would probably be a good idea. Just one tripost until we really need. Uh, close range anyway. Right now. Damn, try posting down below to find some good close range fire support against the foul shakers. And I'm amazed at RKK. I haven't really tried to push more down below. Because this is a good defensive point. This little forest. Is that... That does count as... Yeah, it doesn't actually show the green symbol, but that counts as good cover. So, you know, it's this quite a nice little defensive point here. And, you know, just a bit of extra ground. Joe oh, RKK okay, okay, is on that plus one point advantage. Pretty close point rise. As you can see, he is starting to reel it back into B phase. But, oh, look at that. It's going to be phase C very shortly. And the Asren top flock really brings in the uh, remnants of the Luftwaffe to uh, do, well, just, just bomb from up above. He's got a lot of infantry waiting to move up, but he has nothing to really deal with. Oh, Killed the uh, humbly. Uh, still, Churchill's alive. Got pack 38 engaged in the Churchill. Got another Stug, and this Stug engaged with its uh, lowly amount of ammunition. As he reached for the Kubel munitions to roll munitions him. Oh, Spitfire chasing the Messerschmitt, but not going to be able to catch up. And just thinking of both decks, it's it's rather even fight, right? Spitfires and Messerschmitts, you know, that's. You know, that's a classic Battle of Britain combination right here. Yeah. We've got rifles moving up top because there's nothing really there to stop him. That pack gun is very much exposed if the rifles can get close enough. And is the Challenger still alive? It's dead. Probably by the pack gun, of course. Because Challengers are not that challenging to kill considering they have a rather big gun. The pack 38 hitting up the release jeep, and yeah, he goes, G release. And now the rifles just slowly engaging the pack. I'm, I'm guessing he's going to get killed before he actually kills the pack gun. He's got all his infantry reinforcements. There you go, Messerschmitt chasing in the Spitfire. He got second Spitfire being brought up, the bomber run, but he's going to be able to keep on the tail of the Messerschmitt, especially during the turn, but. If a Messerschmitt can just make a good straight array, there we go. I think he's going to be able to escape the mid. Spitfire doesn't have enough speed to catch up or the turn radius to uh, to catch up either. There you go, second Spitfire now. And really, I'm, I'm amazed Top Flock hasn't brought out like a Flak 88 or something. This is a lot of Spitfires. And he's going in for the fighter, letting the bomber run escape, and of course, he's going to win. He has a veterancy bonus. And he got quite a bit of a pussy, good first support of the command steward. And the Fauchagers and Stern Pioneers are getting pinned down. And yeah, the RK case has done a good job with fire support. That's exactly what I need to do to win the match. And I'm amazed uh, Top Flock hasn't just brought one unit over here just, just to stop his point bleed. Because if he can... You know, at least capture it, so that'll be a good percent of a map. I don't mind the challenge is over here, I apologise. I just, uh, I completely missed it. There's a lot of blue and there's a lot of red. It sometimes just mixes in. And yeah, it's just, this is a machine gun fight between open ground. Stug finally being brought up to 
uh, pound of rays, it does have a reasonable amount of high explosive ammunition to have to get resupplied. And I'm thinking Top Flock is going to be able to hold that town for now. Artillery guns, pound and ray. And oh, there we go. Finally, a two star Spitfire. And AA, of course, is going to stun him up. I think he should be able to get the kill yet. Oh, never mind. He's going in for the uh, J Radi 8. And oh, God. I mean, they're just small bombs, but they yeah, just did a bit of stunning up. No kills. But he should be able to kill the J Radi 8 as it does retreat slowly but surely. I mean, it's rather risky using how. Oh, damn, he does escape. I'm quite surprised. Now, Spitfire is out of cannon ammunition over enemy territory with a measurement on its arse. I don't think it's going to be able to escape, and no, it does not. And, oh, wow, this little wrecky guy is uh, right behind enemy lines, but he's probably getting a good view, a viewpoint of the area. I can't spot the artillery, oh, but he does have the snug, at least spotted. And then you got the Challenger and the Snug, and it's rather even matchup at, at range. It's going to be able to who shoots first. And it's going to be the Challenger in this case as the Snug slowly moves up. Uh, misses, but enough to just give it a bit of a uh, stress. Snug returns fire. Oh, damn. Bailed out, yeah. Oh, Six Pounder got the side shot. Good kill. The Messersmith finally, or a Messersmith, finally managed to kill one of those Six Pounders, but. Well, the deed has already been done, and the Stug has been... St well, I was going to say Stug, but it doesn't really make any bloody sense now, does it? It's dead. Really dead now, considering it's just blown up. But Toflok's still doing a good job. He just has infantry advantage still. And, uh, do do do, RKK has lost the fire support vehicles, as they had been forced to pull back. And here we go, he's finally moving a little bit down below. Try posting up, a bit of infantry. I mean, heck, just a little tank push over here would make some damn good progress. Because there's, there's nothing to stop him. And it's not like Top Flock can just rip out a Tiger. You know, a big scary tank. No, he doesn't have any big scary tanks. He just has Stugs. In an open ground engagement, his airborne deck kind of lacks. There we go, he is ripping out that Stugs free. Uh, some Falchagas too. And he's making good ground, but he is going to get spotted and killed. There we go, Stug spots and Stug blows up. I mean, he really sort of just unloaded it a bit sooner, but still a, a decent push. And there goes all the ground. And I'm just looking up top, that's a lot of pioneers. And some of them even managed to make it into the opposing forest. And he should be able to kill the mortar if he just gets a bit closer. He's got a 17 pounder as well, which I don't really see why. We can't give fire support and you don't really need a 17 pounder in a closer engagement in this town. A 6 pounder is just nice if you need to, you know, need an anti-tank gun in close range engagement. But yeah, Fauchager Pioneer still moving through. They're going to be engaging the uh, mortar. They are taking a heavy fire from the tripost and bombing run there from the J-88. And this is where Hot Flock is really just easy to see all the airplanes he has. And RKK also has a decent amount of airplanes. I guess four, four slots for the Scottish deck, which is pretty good for just an infantry deck. Still not enough. Still just not enough. And also the point advantage as well. And that Stug is moving in through the airfield. And I highly doubt that RKKA has a uh, Typhoon anti-tank to deal with the Stug. It does have a challenge though. And it is engaged and managed to get first shot. Uh, artillery, oh damn. I mean, the veterans, he definitely helped it get, yeah, return shot, yeah. And that's going to give him good uh, good ground down below. And he is losing by 500 points still, but it isn't eight, minute, eight minutes left on the match. It still is anyone's game. I mean, we'll just have to see.
And I go straight from one. Oh, never mind. That was a Typhoon AT. I completely take back my statement. He does have them in his deck. And yeah, he goes a Stug. I mean, I was using like a lot of Spitfires from before, but I guess there's like one card of A-Face Spitfires and then the Bomber and then a Veteran Spitfire and then Typhoon 18 C-Face. And it's Hoflox really just putting on the press now. He's really pushing hard in that town. The rifles just say are not enough to hold against foul shakers, just not at all. And we've got a challenger just slap bang in the middle here. A bit of a uh, ballsy move, I have to say, but uh, uh, whatever you want, buddy, whatever you want. And Mezzo Smith's doing a straight from one on the tri post, and of all things, Spitfire being brought in. And when you have, like, complete ass priority starts to this, yeah, you can just use your uh, fighters to strafe ground targets. And he's going to be using the fight to chase down the Spitfire. It's two on one, and they both have two stars. Guess you win to fight. Uh, yeah, that's, that Spitfire is not going to win the engagement. Uh, he's, it might be able to escape just and how it's turning. But the speed uh, disadvantage it has is just not good. Is it going to get killed? Uh, it seems like it's going to get killed. Yeah, she yeah, goes. And yeah, just... Top Flock's knocked out the majority of Spitfires and on KKA's deck and see he has air supremacy now. B1 rating for a juicy target. Uh, J88 is uh, still just the carpet bombers. Just going to be dropping its uh, explosive load on this infantry group. Only kills the leader. I mean honestly I don't, I don't even really find the carpet bomber J88 to be entirely useful. It's great at stunning. That's its main role. But if I'm spending that much in points, I want to make sure the unit doesn't even get out of that goddamn crater. And there's no fire support at all. So, yeah, the infantry are just going to get rickety wrecked. We've got Churchill down below, just, just a Mark IV, which is rather uneventful. It's a pretty crap tank, I have to say, the Mark IV Churchills. I personally only take the Churchills that have. The 15 frontal armor, except for the fire support run, but that's just my personal preference. Artillery pun right the tri posting. Wasn't it for bad? Good use of artillery as well, using those heavy Jeb 40 pieces. As they are, they are really nice RT pieces for the price. They do like smoke ammunition, but same with a lot of German artillery. They don't have much uh, regular artillery smoke. It's really more of a uh, American thing. And British 25 pounder thing. Uh, so pioneers, but they, uh, they're just going to get killed. We've got an AVRE, which is good. But not going to be enough. All the planes and all. they uh, finally got a Bofors, which gives them some extended range. Meta Smith's going in for the straight from one on top floor. He's going to be able to catch up point rise to RKKA. Uh, yeah, he's going to be able to exceed him, definitely. Unless RKKA can do some crazy person other bomb run. And as you can see, he doesn't do that much damage. Those small caliber bombs. And it seems that uh, RKKA is doing a okay as counterpart. does have his fire support, but it's just a little too late. And that will be a good game. Uh, it's technically a draw, but top flog, he got point advantage, so we're just going to say that he won the match. And this was uploaded by RKKA, so damn good job, and just a damn good match overall. Just, just a good old 1v1. Both sides played to their deck strengths very effectively. I don't really have much to criticize. Except for maybe the fact that RKKA could have pushed a bit harder down below. That seemed like his best course of action, because... The third foul shaker doesn't exactly have great open ground superiority compared to how well the infantry fight and they did in the town up top. But yeah, it's just a great match overall. And I'm going to leave it off. Yeah, it's been another Rangaroo cast. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as usual, please just take it easy.